Nation. I am Chad Ward, the owner and master of Whiskey, Whiskey Bent Barbecue and also the director of barbecue marketing here at Traeger Grills. And we are so excited to have you here today for the Traeger Live, Traeger 101 Live. And I'm Amanda Haas. I'm a cookbook author, recipe tester, and developer. I'm the founder of Amanda Haas Cooks. But most importantly, I'm a Traeger Pro Team member. And Chad, I'm so excited to be doing this with you today. This is going to be great. We're going through a lot of content today. Look forward to sharing it with everyone. Um, before we get into that, Amanda, yeah. tell me a little bit about what you love about the Traeger Hood. Well, the Traeger Hood is amazing. But I think the main word, the first word that comes to mind is community and that I've always wanted my house and my home to be the place where everybody wants to gather. And since I've had a Traeger, no joke, it's that home. So whether people are just, uh, my kids' friends are coming over or I have a couple of friends, I know that any time we cook together out back, it's gonna be a great time. Yeah, I love the community too. I mean, have made so many great relationships throughout in, in the Traeger community, met so many great people. Um, and I love just the ability for food to be able to pull people together from all different walks of life. Right. And the other thing I love about it also is I really enjoy the fact that the grill can take a beginner to an intermediate cook right. and make them really the king or star of the cul-de-sac. So I love that about it. Oh, I love that. It's true though. You can totally elevate people's cooking through it, which is amazing and fun to watch. So this Traeger 101 today is really for all of you. So we'll be taking questions the whole time. I just want to encourage all of you to use this time to ask any question you've ever had about Traeger before we get started, OK? And we can't wait. So without further ado, we're going to get started. And one thing I should tell you is that we're not cooking today as much as you and I love I to on Traeger Lives. But the reason is, is because we're going to cover everything for you. So what are we going to start with? So we're going to talk about wood pellet basics. Yeah. Um, we're going to talk about how to start the grill, mm -hmm. how the fire combusts, those type of things. Um, we're also going to talk about cooking on the Traeger, some of our favorite recipes, yes. some go-tos. And then you're going to wrap it up with? Yeah, we'll wrap it up by showing you how to clean your grill and maintain it as well. Some, something I need a little work on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do too myself. And uh, also know that if for some reason you, you have to bail on us today, you can go back or you want to share with a friend, right. anything of that nature. You can go to Traeger.com slash 101. This is going to be there in all kinds of other assets and content that you can use for anything to do with your Traeger. Uh, get into the basics. So great to have the 101 content for us. Okay, so if we want to start out with wood pellet basics, let's talk about some of the fundamentals, fundamentals and what makes a Traeger grill so different from how we're used to cooking outside. Yeah, so the first thing when we, when we look at the, uh, the, the basics of the pellet grill, yeah. one is going to be our source of heat, mm -hmm. and that's going to be the 100% wood pellet. Uh, you get a lot of flavor off of that, very different than propane or charcoal. Mm -hmm. Cooking, also always going to burn a really clean fire. The other thing to know is we're cooking indirect instead of direct. So Amanda will go into it here in a little bit, but we're using this more as convection than direct heat like you would get with a gas grill or a charcoal grill. Exactly. And I think as someone who cooks for a living and did so much cooking indoors before falling in love with my Traeger, I'm a huge fan of convection heat in general because I like to tell people who are intimidated to grill, think of this as a convection oven that just happens to make everything taste better. So because of the convection heat circulating throughout the grill, things are going to cook really evenly and get really crispy. But the other advantage to it, I think, is that it allows you to cook multiple things at once, which is great too. And it just makes for a more, um, how do I say it? Like everything cooks more evenly. Consistency. Right, consistency. And because you're not cooking over a direct flame, like think if I were using a gas grill and I wanted to put a sheet pan of vegetables on it or a dessert, you would never do that, yeah. right? So because it's indirect cooking, you get all the advantages of the wood smoked flavor but it allows you to cook so many more things than you would typically on a grill. I completely agree. And one right. thing too, uh, since I've been cooking on Traeger, and, and I just think it all around makes you a better cook is getting away from kind of being a slave to the recipe. Exactly. And saying, okay, at 10 hours, I'm gonna pull this off. Right. And start cooking to temperature, internal temperature of the meat, uh, or, or anything of that nature. Right. I mean, you can take an internal temperature of baked potatoes. Bread. You know? Yeah, <laughs> whatever. But cooking to a temperature is gonna make you overall a better cook. And one of the reasons I'm a big, um, advocate of it is I feel like every animal's lived a little different life. So a little more marbling, a little less marbling, right. and it's going to come to that finished temperature at all different rates. So by cooking to an internal temp, it's going to make you a better cook and you're going to be pulling those dishes off at the exact right time. I, I totally agree with that. I'm always going to remember that you, what you said about different animals, different times, and it's true. So as we learn to cook to a temperature, we're going to become better cooks. Right? Absolutely. So awesome. So 
I think we should stop and take a couple questions uh, and down. see if anybody's got any for us yet. Any tips for beginners? Okay, so any tips for beginners for our new Traeger owner, which by the way, congratulations. Yeah. Welcome to the Traeger family. Right. Um, I would say, you know, a lot of this that we're going to go through today as far as keeping your grill clean, I mm -hmm. think that's a big one. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, an instant read thermometer I think is always a great addition. Right. Um, it's going to be a really, really handy tool. Mm -hmm. And then once again, just utilize the app and the website. There's so many great ideas out there. You can look at the apps by experience level. Yes. And just the thing about it is don't overthink it. Just get out there and start triggering. I think that's such a great point. And for beginners as well, don't feel like you have to conquer everything at once. And I do think it's great that we show you if they're, com you know, from simpler to more complicated recipes, start with some basics. But some delicious recipes are really easy to make. So start there and get comfortable, and then you can graduate up to other recipes. Agreed. What else? What are the benefits of convection cooking? You want me you to tell you? You did so well earlier. Go ahead. <laughs> so I love convection cooking, and I always put my oven on convection. So the fact Traeger runs with convection heat is amazing. I think it cooks foods more evenly. I also think it works magic on things like, let's say I do roasted broccoli in the oven, and you just cut up little pieces or cauliflower. If I were to put it on regular heat, it doesn't get as crispy. And I think that has to do with the heat circulation. So crispier skin, crispy veggies, and even cooking. Love it. Yeah. Good. Did I cover it all? Yeah, I, I, I had another bag. You have me speechless. Check, check. Okay, okay. Any others? Yeah, what's, what's the difference between Traeger and Charcoal? What's the difference between Traeger and Gas and Charcoal? You want to start? Yeah, so it really kind of goes back to what we were just talking about. Yeah. And I think the main difference is you've already hit on the convection style cooking and then also the indirect versus direct heat. Right. Um, so on a Traeger, you just have much more versatility and you're going to replicate your results so much more consistently with that indirect cooking than you will with a gas or charcoal direct grill I think type that's situation. Such a great point. And then it also comes down to flavor because yes. since you're cooking with wood and you can select what kind of pellet we have, you're getting your food infused. It's not all smoky tasting, right? No. You just get this wood kissed flavor that you can't replicate with gas or charcoal. You really can't. Yeah, it's a positive add to your food, not a negative. No, for <laughs> that's sure. For sure, right? Other questions for now? All right. Okay, so we're talking about, we're going to talk about fire? Yes, we're going to talk about fire. So tell us a little bit about how it works. Okay, so I, I mean, I'm not an expert, but I do know you need a couple things to start a fire. You need to have oxygen. You need to have a fuel source, which in this case could be wood, right? Yep. And you need ignition. And so Traeger has all of those things, and you can share with us a little bit about how that works. Yeah, so we'll come over here to our, and talk about that. So, so cool. we've got our hopper full of pellets. So once we set our temperature, all that fun stuff, we're going to push those pellets with the auger down to the fire pot. And then here at the fire pot, we have a, a hot rod mm -hmm. that during that startup process is going to come on and, smoke, and kind of start and ignite those pellets. Right. And then once that happens, we're going to add in some air. And that's when the air starts, that's when you're going to start seeing the, the white smoke that you see usually on a trigger right. startup. And at that point, we're just going to regulate the air in the pellets to get to the desired temperature you want to cook at. So great. And I think it's so important that you just shared that, that you're always going to see the white smoke at the beginning. Yes. So thanks for telling us that. Because I think for a lot of new Traeger owners, you're not used to seeing that when you start to cook. So really important thing when you're working with real fire. Yeah, right? yeah. It's a real fire. And, and you'll notice when, anytime you start a fire, whether it be in your Traeger or just yourself, that's kind of the combustion of that fire starting where you get that white smoke. And as the fire starts to cook, and you start cooking over more coals yeah. than raw wood, then you start to get that much cleaner fire. Okay, okay, we're good. I think we have fire mastered, but maybe people have questions about it as well. Um, when or how should you use super smoke? Oh, I think this is a question for Chad. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so when or how should you use super smoke? Um, I use it any time I'm operating my grill at 225 degrees or lower. Okay. Um, I love it because usually if I'm at that temperature, I'm wanting something with a little more smoky flavor to it. So right. I will use it on any cuts that are down uh, below 225. So I've used it on ribs, brisket, pork butt, um, all those things. So it's really up to you and how much you know, smoke flavor you want. But on some of those bigger cuts, I really, really enjoy a little heavier smoke profile. So that's when I use it. I really wish we'd cooked for our own good today. I'm super hungry right now. <laughs> and because I know how good his barbecue is, I, we didn't think this through well. I guess not. <laughs> Next time. Any other questions? 
Is it? Oh, I, can I take this question? Yes, please. Is it okay to grill in the rain? And this is for Dan. Yes, it's okay to grill in the rain. I do it all the time, and we test the living daylights out of these grills. The and bleep. It, yeah, the bleep, said the, the bleep. bleep out of yeah. our grills in rain, and for hours. I cook all the time in the rain. I don't know why. I just get excited to do it. It's it's very easy to do. You get wet. Your food's going to be great. And for me, I live in Florida. <laughs> so if you don't cook in the rain, you would probably not cook it all right? during the summer. Because those yeah. summer showers would stop you. So yeah. there is nothing wrong with it. You can definitely cook in the rain. Uh, you just want to be smart and you cover your food up as you're taking it and that kind of stuff. But yeah. go for it. That's awesome. And Yeah. Ooh, the biggest difference, what's the biggest difference between the ironwood and the timber line? You talked about this earlier. Yeah, yeah so the biggest difference to me is the, ins the level of insulation. So we have here on the ironwood, we've got both the sides insulated. We're on the timber line, we have uh, the whole door insulated. It has more insulation, it has some on the back. Um, and the grease management system. So this right. has our traditional oh, right. bucket exterior grease system, whereas the timber line has the internal grease system that's tucked away uh, on the side of your grill. I would say those are two of the big ones. Right. Both get to 500 degrees, both mm -hmm. have the bottom shelf that can move up into smoke mode or sear mode. Um, so you have a lot of similarities, but you got a little more real estate on the timber line if you go with the bigger model mm -hmm. and uh, the insulation and the grease manager. Right. It helps us all select one that's right for us. This is yes. my workhorse, by the way. This yeah, grill me, itself, I do so much on it, it's amazing. Me too, that's, yeah. that's my go-to at the house. Good. Other questions? All right. Okay, are we moving on to starting up our grill? Yes, so it's okay. time to start up your grill. Okay. For that new Traeger owner and the thousands more out there, <laughs> let's say you just got your grill, this is your first time, you're gonna wanna grab your owner's manual, take a look or go online to 101, you can do it there also, Traeger.com slash 101, and look at the burn in. You're gonna wanna get this grill burned in, it's gonna season it and set you up for success. So once you've looked that up, get the burn in done, and we'll go from and there. And then we're going to go to the basics. But I should say, I think it's so great. We've got everything at Traeger.com slash 101 now. So all of these questions that you have, you can find more information there. But then when we want to start it, we start with the basics. We make sure it's plugged in underneath there and plugged into a power source. And then you turn it on on the back. And then, Chad, the magic happens. Yes. So <laughs> one thing to also remember is when you, have, when you get your grill, you get it burned in, Try to keep it plugged in mm, and powered mm, and mm. powered on. So this way, when we have firmware updates and this is connected to Wi-Fi, you'll be able to get those over the air. Yeah. Your grill will be updated and you'll be ready to go the next time you want to cook. It's smarter than we are. I laugh that if you just leave it plugged in, all of the updates get made to the app. It's Don't incredible. Do the for you. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, if you say so. The other thing is, just as importantly as what we're about to share, is you need to make sure that you always have pellets in the hopper, right? So I start with the full hopper. And I think you and I are both good about keeping some close by because if you're doing a longer cook and you might need to add more, it's just really nice to have them handy. For sure. And yeah. speaking of that, let's talk a little bit about storing pellets. Okay. So I'm using the, the Stay Dry pellet container that we just launched a week or two ago. Mm -hmm. Really, really great. Uh, pour my pellets in there. I can mix two varieties if I want to. Nice. But keeps it nice and tight. Right. We want to keep moisture out of there. Um, that's the key thing. That's why we want to store them that way. So you can either use the Stay Dry pellet container, a covered bucket, anything of that nature, just make sure you're keeping those pellets nice and dry and out of uh, harm's way. Out of harm's way for sure. And I don't live in a very wet place either, but I do store mine up a little bit, right? If I'm using the grill like this is fine, but I keep them up in a cupboard so they can't get wet at all either and keep them covered like this, so they're great. So a couple other things we need to do before you start cooking is you need to make sure that these are fairly clean, right? So that if your grates are dirty at all, as your grill warms up, you can use a grill brush to just scrape them down. And then if you're using a foil liner, you wanna make sure that you've changed that before you get started if there's a lot of residue on it. One thing I should note as well is if you don't use the liners and you wanna wrap it in aluminum foil, you can. You just wanna make sure you wrap it tightly so that the air can continue to circulate throughout the grill and you really take advantage of that convection heat. Absolutely, so now that we've got everything cleaned up, turned on, it's time. So we are going to <laughs> Turn the grill on. So okay. right here, we would start with the standby button. Yep. We're gonna hold that for three seconds. We're playing pretend, by the yes, way. Yes, all right? demos today. <laughs> it's not turned on. The Traeger logo will pop up right here. Once that happens, you take the dial, pick your temperature. Yep. Push said dial in <laughs> to set temperature and hit the ignite button. And 
The first thing after that is you want to make sure the lid is always closed. Yep. And just for clarification, if there's one thing you take from today, yes. I don't care if you have Traeger serial number 0001, <laughs> first one ever made, and anything after that, every Traeger grill can be started up with the lid closed. Yep. Remember, lid yes. closed when you start it. Okay? It doesn't matter which one. No. It does not matter. <laughs> I you don't remember. have a special model. No, Every that's a great point. Start we do not have up. a special model. We yeah. all have the special model. It needs to be closed. Yeah. So the other thing you should know is that while it's heating up, it'll probably take you about 10 to 15 minutes for it to heat up with the lid closed. And also, the fan will turn on and off as it's heating. So don't be alarmed if it gets really quiet. It knows what it's doing, I promise. It will continue to heat up. Yeah, and the other thing is, while the new grills have the great Wi-Fi feature, mm -hmm. you can still use this grill just plugged into power with no Wi-Fi connection. It's still going to do everything for you. You're just going to lose uh, some of the benefit of not having it connected, some of the things you can do on the app, etc. And you know I'm obsessed with the app, but I, I joke I don't use a lot of technology in my life when I'm cooking, but I use this app all the time for inspiration for recipes. Like if I go to the store and I don't know what I'm going to make, I'll take a look and I'll choose a recipe. But then it's got a ton of information and it allows me to have my hands free. When I put something on the grill, I walk away. The fact that I can change the temperature, I can put a timer on, I can turn it off, it's remarkable. Yeah, I love the app. For me, where it's been a real game changer is the overnight cooks. Oh. <laughs> so whether it be a barbecue competition, you know, the Super Bowl with Dan Patrick, usually you're cooking uh, somewhere off-site and staying somewhere else. Uh, so it's nice to be able to get those grills connected to Wi-Fi, put the meat on, go back and get a little bit of a night's sleep instead of the old days. Yeah, when right? You had a zero gravity camp chair and you just slept right next to the cooker. So <laughs> I, uh, I like this app a whole lot. For I, can, I, wanna be, I, I don't want to go with you. Maybe I want to observe what it looks like on Super Bowl Sunday when you're doing all of this overnight. But this has to be a game changer for you. I love the app. Yes. That's so it's awesome. Great. And when the um, pellet sensor will tell you too. That's yep. cool. It's another so, great one. Okay. One last tip when you're starting these. We've said it before. These are all the same when you start. You want to start with your lid down. But even on these other models like the Pro, you'll have to turn this knob to set the temperature. Um, so that's just a little bit different in, at the beginning, but just make sure we're still turning the power on, we're doing all those things, and we're keeping the lid closed. Okay? Do we have any questions, Krista? We do. Um, so do you leave the switch on all the time? Do you leave the switch on all the time? Yes. That is what we mean by having the switch on, keeping it powered on. You don't have to have it powered on as far as like setting a temp, but you just want the switch on in the back. Right. That way the grill will be on and will be able to get the Wi-Fi updates. Right. And you see it in standby mode. I can see it when my grill is still turned on, but it's not running, right? You see the little light on the grill. Yep. So that's when you know that it can receive the updates and everything else. Yep. Other questions? During startup, can you put food on before it cooks or not? Oh, I love this question. Yeah. So <laughs> during startup? Yeah. During startup, can you put on food while the grill is getting up to temp? Um, for me, I just have... Usually, I don't like to. The only thing where I'll say it's okay is if it's a covered dish. Right. You know, if I'm doing some veggies and the first 10, 20 minutes are, you know, covered. Right. Then I'll throw them in there. But if it's not covered, I would prefer to wait until you get that nice, clean, thin blue smoke. Because I don't want to be putting any of that white smoke on a great steak or a burger because that smoke is acidic. kind of creates a little bit of what we call a creosote flavor, uh, which is a terrible word to say. It just sounds bad. <laughs> So I wouldn't want my Pretty food so. to taste like it. You know what I mean? So I, um, so that's why I kind of wait until we get that nice thin blue smoke. I think it's such a great point. And if you're seriously into barbecue or anything where you're working with meat that's open like that, it's a great point. But if you want to, you know, twist our arm and make an exception, it would be for anything that's covered, that goes yeah. uncovered and stays uncovered. So. And that would just be if you're in a rush, you don't want to forget to throw it on. Right, of that right, nature. exactly. Wait the extra couple of minutes and just, just like do it me. right. <laughs> Other questions? Do you have to remove the pellets and store them after every cook is the question? Yes. I do not remove them every time, but what do you do? It depends on weather too. For yeah, me. yeah. to me a lot of it depends on weather. Mm -hmm. I don't remove mine after every cook, but I'm probably firing my grill up a couple times a week. We do the same thing. Whereas if you know, you're going out of town for an extended vacation, something like that, it's during a humid time of year, right. we make it so easy to clean the pellets out right. in the back with the pellet clean out. 
Um, I would do it, but I would say after every cook, absolutely not. You don't have to. Right. If you're going to have a big, hopefully you never have to take a hiatus from your Traeger. I know. But See, you, we're spoiled. But if I you don't. do have to take a hiatus from your Traeger, three, four weeks, yes. you may want to clean those out. Also, too, you know, if you have taken a break like that and you notice, oh, man, I'm not kind of getting to my temperatures I usually get to, mm -hmm. go ahead and change those pellet, pellets out. Because nine times out of ten, you've got some pellets that have gathered some moisture, right. and they won't, we can't produce the BTUs to get you to the high enough temperature uh, that you're set at. That's such a great tip. So, yeah, I think we use ours an extreme amount. I cook on my Traeger four or five times a week, right? But yeah. if you ever go for an extended period, it's a great idea to empty it out. Completely. Yeah. What other questions? Um, we've got one more. So, okay. do you use an extension cord for power between the pellets? Can you use an extension cord uh, for a longer run of power? Yes. And, and just typical, you know, extension cord common sense, you know, make sure there's no nicks, right. make sure it's well grounded. Uh, all those things. So yes, you can use it. And what I find is I usually go with a little heavier duty one. That way you just know you've got a nice cord that's going to last a long time. Oh, that's so good to know. And I actually have this conversation with an electrician at my house because mm -hmm. I'm like, is it pulling less power? It was on a new power outlet. I had a good cord, same thing. He's like, make sure you're safe. But I haven't noticed any difference in it, like pulling less power, not getting up to temp. I use an extension cord for all of my grills. And the other thing to know too is the, the while we're talking about the power pull, yeah. On a Traeger. Right. Well, after the hot rod goes off and the startup mode's done, right. the maintenance of it, I think is about the pull of like a, a light bulb. Wow. So it's, it's not a huge power pull uh, once we get through the startup process. That's awesome. That's good. Thank you for that. Yes. What other questions? We're ready to keep moving on, huh? Yes. What's next for us? Cooking on the Traeger. That's what we're going to talk okay. about. Okay. We're getting to the so, fun stuff. One thing to, to, to know when you... Uh, go to put your food on. Mm -hmm. You are going to see some temperature fluctuation. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, I usually cook at 275, a lot of stuff. So if I'm at 275, the ironwood, I'm going to see it, you know, 272 to 278, right. which is perfectly fine. Absolutely. You know, when you set your oven to 275, it can vary 10 to 20 degrees either way. You just don't know it because they don't tell you. They don't you. tell you. So uh, that's one thing to notice. There's nothing bad about it at all because remember, whether it be a dish, whether it be a protein, Food likes to cook at a very consistent temperature. Right. And if you're within 10 degrees, that's going to end up helping make it's a tasty happy meal. happy food. <laughs> yes. I say, too, you want to make sure, you know, every time you open a lid, you're going to lose heat, right? It's like opening the door of an oven. And I'm always telling people, keep it open for as little time as possible. So the same thing applies here. The other thing you want to think about is that you want to make sure that your food is spread out well around the Traeger so that the convection heat can continue to work. But if you keep good pellets in it and you make sure to not leave this open for extended periods of time, your food will cook so evenly. Like you said, on ovens, they can drop severely. We just can't see it. And you will be so surprised at how quickly these bounce back and recover. They really do. Yeah. So what, okay, we need to talk about smoke. Should yes. we talk about smoke a little bit more? Yeah, so yeah. we talked about it a little bit, the white smoke versus thin blue smoke. Um, white smoke is just a, a poorly combusted fire, mm -hmm. uh, has that off acidic taste. Mm -hmm. um, and then the blue smoke is what we want to leave. That's what, that's what we want to taste. The good stuff. Absolutely. So that's, that's what you're looking for. That's what you're going to find once you let your trigger get started up. Um, we hit it on it a little bit beforehand, mm -hmm. but we'll go back one more time. Super smoke. So super right. smoke is available on the ironwood and the timberline. Um, it's a way of putting much more smoke into the chamber and operates between 165 degrees and 225 degrees. Okay. And that's when you're really trying to smoke food in general, yes. right? Everything over that, you're just trying to cook so, and you get that amazing wood flavor. So that's great to know. And also, if for some reason during your startup, if you get an error, mm -hmm. um, simplest thing to do, you'll have an error code here. Mm -hmm. Hold down the standby button. Let it go into shutdown mode. It'll tell you how long the shutdown is going to be. Let the shutdown happen completely. Right. Lid closed again during the entire shutdown. And once the, the shutdown is done, then you can go run back through the paces, restart it, right. and everything should be good to go. And one thing to note, if you ever do get that shutdown message, is to take a look. I, I'm really adamant about making sure that the fire pot is cleared of any pellets, right? So you can vacuum those out. It's just you're always going to have a better cook the next time if you start with a clean slate. And we'll talk more about the shutdown mode in general for that. But it'll really help reduce the flare-ups. Okay. And then, in the <laughs> very unlikely, hopefully, okay. event of a fire. Yes. So usually... And I'm 
I can tell on myself a little bit here too, if you end up having a grease fire, it is usually due to cleaning or lack of cleaning. Exactly. Um, you've got build up of grease, whatever the case. Well, right. you got there. You've got a fire. <laughs> what happening. to do? Yeah. So first off, remember, as Amanda taught us about fire, one key thing it needs, oxygen. Right. So first thing you want to do, if you have a fire, close the lid. Mm -hmm. We say close the lid a lot. Well, I, we do say close the lid a lot, and hopefully <laughs> it was closed while you were cooking. Yeah. But if there's a flare up when it was open. Yep. Make sure the lid's closed. We're yeah. going to uh, starve of any, of any oxygen. Right. Once we get done with that, go right into the shutdown mode. Let everything shut down. Let everything burn out. If for whatever reason th this thing's still raging and it's got you worried, you're seeing <laughs> fire come out of the grease exhaust, then you can go ahead and unplug it from the wall. But that's really the last case scenario. Right. Let it run through and just, like I said, just for whatever reason, if it's, if it's not wanting to extinguish itself in a timely manner, then you can just unplug it and let it sit, do its thing. I know it's easy to want to peek and look. Don't, <laughs> you know, just let it go and then right. come back and clean up and reassess the situation. Exactly, great advice for sure. So before we get on to our favorite part, yes. do we have other questions? Just grab it. <laughs> what and how so, should you use super smoke? Question is, what and how should you use super People smoke? People want to know, Chad. Uh, yes, yeah, super smoke is a hot 101 topic today. Um, so I like to use it whenever I'm wanting to put more smoke onto a dish or onto a protein. I use it uh, almost religiously on overnight briskets, but um, I'll put them on at 185 or 225. Just let them roll all night, super smoke. Wow. And then you know, bump it up once I wrap. So okay. that's when I like to use it. Um, I know some folks like to use it on um, uh, broccoli. I've never it's, tried yeah, it. Yeah, Julie does it. Oh really, my gosh, so really good, good to know. Yeah, so it's like a, a smoked broccoli and it's okay. really, really tasty. Okay. okay, good. Super smoke all the way. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, so should you keep a pan of water on the grill? Should you keep a pan of water on the grill while cooking? So a lot of times competition people have done this oh. because it all started back from the, the offset pits. Okay. So offset pits, a lot of them can run really dry as far as like a right. dry heat. Right. So you put a pan of water in there to introduce mm -hmm. some water, some humidity, mm -hmm. and kind of not make it as, as dry of a heat. Right. Uh, just moisten it a bit, if you okay. will. Right. So what I like about the Traeger, though, the Traeger, I feel like it's balanced enough. Mm -hmm. I don't need to add any supplemental water. Because we're already creating a great fire. We've got right. the convection. Right. Whereas, you know, you're not cooking with convection on some of these offsets and different type of uh, charcoal and wood grills. Right. So it's funny. I've never had anyone ask me if I do that on here. I would think the only time I'd ever want to do that is if you're doing bread baking or something where yeah. it's a typical thing to do in a regular oven as well, where you want that hit of steam to help make a crust or do something Good special. Point. But I've never done it. Yeah. yeah. I, have, I haven't either on a trigger. Yeah. Other questions? Do you need an insulation blanket for the timberline? Unless you live somewhere in Antarctica or somewhere where it gets really, really <laughs> miserably cold, I do not believe you need it. I've cooked on a timberline in, you know, less than five degree temper temperatures. Wow. And it is held strong. Yeah, we cooked on one at the Super Bowl in Minneapolis. I think it was like oh, seven freezing. below. Oh, freezing. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and, and it'll hold strong. I mean, that, that insulation... What the product team's done with the way they designed that grill, uh, yeah. it's going to help keep your temperatures there. So I do not think you need an insulation blanket for a timberline. Oh, that's so good to know. So rain, snow, we're happy with our grills in this yes. in inclement weather. <laughs> what else? Can you use the app over the cellular? What'd you say? Can you use the app? Can you use the app over the cellular? You don't need, I don't have my Wi-Fi on ever typically when I'm using it. Can you use it over cellular? Yeah, I mean, you should yeah. be able to search the app, look right. over cellular, right. that kind of stuff. Uh, I just think you would have to be hooked up. The when grill's got to be hooked up to the network along with your phone to get all the grill stuff. Yeah, when you're actually grilling it, yeah. it needs to all be hooked up to the same thing, right? I'm, I'm assuming. So, yes, yeah. that's the only time that I really do. Otherwise, when I'm running around, I don't. So, yeah, just to research things on it. If you're not at home, you don't have to. But when you're cooking, yes. Yep. Okay, great. Other questions? What's the difference between Traegers with a chimney and oh, Traegers without a oh, chimney? Oh, we're getting this question. Yes. Okay, so, I'm going to back up so yeah. you can show everybody. So a lot of times when you when you look at, you know, let's go where we started. So mm -hmm. that's the chimney. Mm -hmm. uh, Pro 34 here. So one of the main reasons that we put this on there was two. One, you got to have a way to exhaust the smoke anyway. Mm -hmm. And two, if you did not put a chimney on it, when people saw it at retail, they didn't know it was a smoker. Right. 
So that's just people associate that chimney with, you know, oh, that's a, that's a barbecue smoker, you know? Right. So then as our product team grew and we had a bunch of really smart people here and we started <laughs> looking at the smoke science behind it, we decided to use the downdraft exhaust in the back. Yep. And so what happens here, the way they've dumbed it down for a pit master. Well, is, you had to dumb it down for me. <laughs> is when we get that smoke in this cook chamber, convection's rolling around. As right. it stays in the cook chamber, it starts picking up dirty molecules. And that's what will start to make that white smoke. So what happens is when we get that dirty smoke, it gets heavy enough down here at the downdraft, and then we push it out of the back. Wow. So we can maintain that thin blue smoke at all times. That's incredible. I mean, that's just really design, advanced design, right? It but is. I do laugh because some people say it's not a Traeger unless it's got the smoke stack. I'm like, if you want this one, you can still get it, yeah. right? But this is a really thoughtful design. It really, really is. Really smart. So we've got smart people here. Other questions? Okay. Amazing. Well, we're moving on to my favorite part. Yes. I think yours too. Let's talk recipes yes. and cooking. So what do you like? We've got it started up. It's ready to go. What are some of the recipes that you love to put on the Traeger? Okay, I love everything, and I think that's what convinced me that I needed to actually work with this company because I put all of my types of cooking on it. But some of my favorites are things like I have a sheet pan salmon recipe with roasted vegetables that is super simple to do on here. I love baking on it, so I do a coconut. It's on the, they're all on the app and on the website, but I do a coconut dark chocolate brownie that's amazing. I do molasses cookies. I mean, you name it, I've made it on here. I do make one rib recipe. It's nothing compared to yours, I'm sure, but my <laughs> kids think it's awesome. Steaks, pork, chicken, all of it. How about you? Yeah, so for me, I mean, with my background being a competition barbecue, obviously, chicken, pork ribs, pork butt, brisket. Yeah. Uh, if you have not done pizza on a Traeger. So good. It really is. Even if you go the easy way out and get a take and bake, right. it still tastes so much better and so different on a Traeger. I absolutely Love it. Uh, two more of my favorites, obviously, burgers and steaks. Yeah. So one thing I want to bring up about those, when you're cooking them on a Traeger, a little bit different than cooking it on direct heat. So mm -hmm. we talked about that a little right. bit earlier. Oh so so people what we can do, with, with so when you're cooking on a gas grill or a charcoal grill and you're yeah. cooking a steak or a burger, you're constantly flipping, right? Because you have yeah. this harsh direct heat. On a Traeger, since we're cooking evenly with convection, you don't have to worry with that. So what I like to do... If, if you really need sear marks, if that's what you want, sure. you can throw some cast iron grates in here, right. let them heat up while you're cooking, and then finish them on the cast iron. Right. To me, I've never had anyone say, hey, Chad, that is gorgeous crosshatch sear marks. Right. I'm so glad you but took I, the time to do those. But I have had people say, man, that's one of the tastiest steaks I've ever had. Right. So I'm focusing a lot more on the taste than I am the sear marks. Um, if you want that mired reaction, if you want that look, use cast iron grates. But... You do not have to, and you will still have one of the most tastiest burgers or steaks. I love a tra good Traeger burger. That's the thing, and I think it comes down to aesthetics versus flavor, right? So if somebody yeah. really wants it to look a certain way, but I've never had a tastier burger than one made yeah. on a Traeger. Right? Absolutely. So, yeah. uh, so which pellets are you going to run? Okay, so we love to talk about pellets around here, and here's my thought on them. I, I think I'm really loyal to a couple, and it's the ones I've tried from the beginning. So I love our signature blend. But I use a ton of apple as well. And I think, Chad, one of the reasons I like to use them is because I like to create menus that just use one type of pellet. So I did a Thanksgiving menu for us here a couple of Thanksgivings ago, and I just designed the menu to work with apple pellets. So think of a brine turkey with maple and black Ooh. pepper, and then I've got sausage stuffing with it, all the baked goods. It was amazing. Sounds really delicious. Yeah, so good. How about you? So for me, I love the signature blend. Yeah, I got a lot of those at the house. I, uh, I like to mix. I'll use the stay dry pellet container and I'll mix 50-50 mm -hmm. um, cherry and pecan. I oh, love that combo. That's your secret? Yes, that's wow. it. I got a secret. <laughs> um, so that's, that's my go-to. And then yeah. another one, if I'm doing a long overnight, you know, beef rib, brisket, I want that bold smoky flavor, I'll right. go with a hickory. That's what I save those for when I'm smoking or doing things that are more in your world. I like yeah, it. Amazing. So good. And so I'm going to say something one more time, just like keeping the lid closed. The one thing you want to remember about your pellets, keep your hopper full, yes. right? You just want to make sure that you've got your hopper full during your cooks and before you start. Super important. And another thing, there's a lot of options out there when it comes to pellets. Right. Um, buy trigger pellets. And the reason I say that is we control the quality specification of what comes in. Mm -hmm. We follow our strict manufacturing guidelines. 
And the only pellets that go out are the ones that meet our requirements and our moisture level. Right. So when you get that bag of pellets, you dump it in this grill. They've been engineered and created in a way that you're going to get a great performance out of your grill every single time. And believe it or not, there's a ton of science that goes into wood pellets. I you know, as far that. as how much moisture, how many right. to use, you know, how do you use the right uh, varieties mm -hmm. of pellets so you don't create too much ash. Wow. So all those things go into it. That's all been done for you. You don't have to worry yeah, about that. Yeah, they've done the homework. Just, uh, just by Traeger. We own all of our own mills, which is something Amazing. Not, not many can say. No, if it ain't broke, right? Yes. That's what we say. So and we have so many different amazing varieties. So I've never had to bother going no. anywhere else. It's awesome. Okay, before we move on, do we have more questions? We do? What are the best recipes for beginners? What are the best recipes for beginners? I'm going to brag about your recipe, so will you just tell them what I love <laughs> yeah, learning so from when you? Yeah, so Amanda first came on, we were just talking about simple things that you could wow people with mm -hmm. off the Traeger. And one of them to me is simple. Boneless, skinless chicken breast. Hit it with your favorite uh, poultry seasoning, 275 on the Traeger. Depending on the thickness of the breast, 45 to 60 minutes. Yeah. I'm going to use a probe, and once it hits 165, Done. pull it off and rest it. And, and I just feel like we were always raised on dry, Ugh. terrible gas grilled chicken as right. kids. Right. And when you just do something that simple and people see it, and they're like, oh my gosh, what'd you do? And I'm like, yeah. be so ready to be so unimpressed. I know, but that's, that's the best easy. part. That's yeah. the best part. I love that. that. That one's a good one for me. And then mm -hmm. staying down the chicken vein, one that I just did with uh, Malcolm Reed at How to Barbecue, right? Yeah. One of the things I love about the Traeger, being able to cook a whole meal in it. Yes, so I love that too. So we did a spatchcock chicken at 375. Wow. And then we did some uh, bacon Brussels oh, up so top good. at the same time. So good. Love it. So th those are two simple ones that are on the app. You can go check it out. Okay, those are awesome suggestions. And I think if you're just beginning and you want to learn the variety of things you can do on the Traeger, one of my favorite things is to just chop up a ton of broccoli or cauliflower or carrots and toss them olive oil, any seasoning you want. I'll do salt and pepper a lot. Put them on a sheet pan and just directly onto the grill. I do them at like 400, 425, and you get that high convection heat. They're crispy and delicious, and they don't taste like anything you've ever had before. I also love a lot of the things you're doing. So I do like a sheet pan chicken where you just take cut up pieces, and I've got some fennel and onions and um, I think a little orange juice and Dijon mustard. All you do is assemble it and put it on a sheet pan on here delicious but then the basics of like a burger just try a burger or a steak and just follow d the directions with the you know simplest directions as possible you'll be blown away yeah and remember also as we talked about on the app or on uh the website when you're looking at recipes we have everything uh at what level of recipe it is so which is so handy it is yeah it's really handy what other questions Oh, what are both of our favorite seasonings? You go first. So I'm biased. I have my own seasoning on. Oh. So <laughs> uh, my favorite one from, from mine is uh, one called The Rocks. It's kind of, I built it for red meat, so brisket, but also wild game. Oh, wow. And then the one that I really love from Traeger is I've always just been a pork and poultry. Yeah. Like you that know what, pork that and poultry, great. that color that it puts on ribs or a pork butt, it's just like, Lights out. So Epic. those are two of my faves. Okay. I, I really have a hard time deciding these things. I'm going to do two. Is it called the shanty? What was the lemonade one that you had? Summer. Summer shanty. Is that gone? I just thought it was super cool to put on vegetables. R.I.P. But R.I.P. But I put the chicken one on everything. Yeah. I put. I tell people too, just like to give people permission to take something that we say is for prime rib or chicken. You can put it on your vegetables. <laughs> yeah. It's super no, fun. It, so. It's absolutely great. And I think one more that's uh, kind of a sleeper in the Traeger lineup is just a straight up Traeger rub. Right. That's a good one on veggies, all purpose. That's a pretty so solid good. one too. So we can, we're having a hard time deciding. Coffee yeah. too, what's the one that has coffee in it? Prime rib? The coffee rub. The coffee rub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. coffee we're rub. We're so spoiled. I'm like, I don't know, I got them all, but you can't go wrong, right? What other questions? What is the best way to sear on a Traeger? What is the best way to sear on a Traeger? So, couple of ways. Yep. One, you can do cast iron grates yep. that heat up right here. You could do a cast iron skillet. Yes. Also, depending on if you want more like a Pittsburgh sear. Um, but for me, when I sear on a Traeger, I, I'm usually cooking reverse sear. If you want to yeah. know more about that, there's plenty on the website. Right. So I'm smoking it to start with and then searing it off at the end. Mm -hmm. So I'll have my grill up to, like in this case, I'll have it up to 500. Those cast iron grates getting really, really hot. Yep. So it hits 500, give it a couple of minutes. Yep. And then I just take the steak, usually 60 to 90 seconds each side, depending on what cut and thickness and temperature. 
Uh, and then I like to, and then flip it and go another 60 to 90 seconds and voila, there you go. I said voila. Yeah. <laughs> I do something similar to that as well. I'll use a cast iron pan if you just want things to look seared in, ge in general. But what you have to do is make sure you put that on as you're heating up your grill, right? Yeah. Because you don't want to put a piece of meat into a cold pan. So get that pan really hot too. But you know what else I've done when I'm doing smaller foods and I don't want to worry about them falling through? If I have a grill pan that's cast iron with grill marks on it too. So I'll just put that on here and heat it up. And I've done shrimp on that oh, yeah. and other things before. And they'll sear too. So if it's important for you to have that sear, you can, you can do it with the get grates it. or a pan or a grill pan. Yeah. And high temp. High temp. These get hot. They get yes, hot they enough. So that's what's awesome. Yeah. So, Where we start? welcome to the family. <laughs> and the question was, can the Traeger do just your regular, normal grilling and cooking? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I think that's what we love about it, is mm -hmm. you can do so many things on it, as far mm -hmm. as your veggies, desserts, breads, proteins, wild game, you um, know, all amazing. kinds of stuff. It's, it's really uh, fundamental. So if, you, if you're a guy that, you know, used to cook your burgers on medium-high gas grill, mm -hmm. then you're no longer that guy or gal, <laughs> and now you're the person that's going to be cooking your burgers on a beautiful Traeger at somewhere right. around 350, 375. Right. That, that's really the, the biggest uh, learning point for people that are coming over from gas grill is, or, or charcoal grill is right. they're so used to, well, my burners were on medium or medium high, and now we're having to try to equate that to, oh, Temperature. you should be cooking at 375 if you like it that way or that kind of thing. So right. get in there, just play around with it. Yeah. You know, the, the one thing is, you know, these grills are very forgiving. Mm -hmm. So instead of overanalyzing it or thinking about it, just go out and cook. Just cook. You and, know? You know, I think the thing is in Chad's world too, where he's known for smoking so many things, people think they'll say to me, oh, you have a Traeger smoker. Yes, it smokes, but it does everything else as well. And so when you get out of that lower temperature range, I like to explain to people, your food isn't going to taste smoky. What you do get is the flavor of the wood pellets, which yes. is really different than putting a ton of smoke on something. So when I say I cook my desserts on it, I mean it. <laughs> I really yeah. do, and I love it. So you can do anything that you would normally put in an oven on here. Anything you'd put on a grill, you can do on a Traeger, too, on a gas or charcoal. Do you have a favorite pellet that goes well with everything? Do you have a favorite pellet that goes well with everything? I do. What is yours, Chad? It's the Traeger Signature Blend. Uh, nice, nice. That's, that's the one I use. If I had to pick a non-blend, it would probably be the Traeger Cherry. Yeah, Cherry's great, yeah. too. Uh, we're, we have a lot in common. I, I'm going to confess, so many times, I don't even know what's in my grill because I cook so often, <laughs> but a lot of times it's signature or it's apple. I think that for the types of food I make, both of those are amazing most of the time. Yes. Yeah. How do you recommend using the top shelf for cooking? Oh, that's a great question. That is a good one. How do you recommend using the top shelf for cooking? I'll let you go first, Amanda. What do you think? Well, I think the thing that's so interesting is when you're working with convection like we are, things are going to cook evenly throughout this entire grill. So this idea that you have to have everything down low to be closer to the heat source, you don't have to worry about that. So I, d I tend to use it just, I cook different things on different levels, right? So I don't even really think about the fact like, oh, something's got to be high and something's got to be low. Like, would you automatically put burgers down here and veggies or something else up top? I do my drip analysis. Oh, so great So what idea. don't I want to drip on the bottom? Right. So I don't mind, like, if I got burgers down here and asparagus up here, mm -hmm. little olive oil seasoning drops on your burgers. Right. Not a huge deal. Uh, but I wouldn't want burger grease dripping all over my asparagus. That is so smart. So that's how I look at it. Um, right. But, you know, a lot of times, too, if I'm just doing a big rib cook, yeah. I love this ironwood. This top shelf is so functional. I can put you know, trim down, I can put another three racks of ribs up here. <laughs> right. Um, and I just love that about it. So don't just kind of pigeonhole the top shelf no, as for afterthoughts. No, this valuable, valuable real estate. It's so funny. And now I'm remembering because I developed a recipe for us recently that's like a Moroccan spiced chicken with root vegetables. And I intentionally put the chicken legs up here so the juices would drip into the root vegetables. And it's spectacular. Again, perfectly crisp skin. I didn't touch them on this top shelf. So it's super versatile. Treat it like the other one and think about, like you said, what, what's dripping into the other yeah. thing below it. It's a really great suggestion. 
Do you ever mix pellet flavors? Yes, I actually just talked about that. <laughs> I, uh, They're joining us late. Yeah, I, I do a 50-50 of pecan and cherry all the time. Um, but yes, it, that's the beauty of it. It's, it's your food. It's your flavor profile. Get funky with it. You know, if, if you, if you want to mix two or three different pellet flavors together, go for it. If it's what you and your family like to eat, then I'm all for it. I think it's a matter of giving people permission to be have fun with it and mess around, yeah. right? And so he is a master pit master, and he's telling you he mixes cherry and pecan. Amazing. Like, I might do apple with something else to add a little bit more of a woody flavor to things. So yes, we're giving you permission to mix and match and see what you like. Yeah. Should you ever cover the grill grates with aluminum foil? Um, I don't see why you would want to do that. It's yeah. going to impede airflow. Right. As we talked about, this grill flows like this. Right. So if you have foil on the whole entire grate, it's just gonna not going to let you get the air that you want. You're not going right. to get the steady temp. Um, you know, it's one of those things, if it's something that's just dirty right. and you're worried about it, this may be the perfect opportunity. Take yourself a large disposable pan, put a touch of water in it, put that on the bottom shelf, put whatever your messy mess is on the top shelf and let it drip down into that pan. So right. that would be the only reason I'd see that you'd want to, you know, that or Wrap maybe it. I know sometimes people worry about fish sticking and those kind of things. Yeah. These are great grates. Just make sure they're well oiled. Yes. And you should be good to go. But do not wrap this whole grate with foil because it will mess up the airflow with yep. the grill. Agreed. Thanks for asking that. Yeah. Great question. Any other questions? Okay, we're moving on. Okay, so we got through our cooking yes. and our pellets, and now we're gonna talk about shutting down the grill. Yes, so what do we do here, Amanda? It's pretty simple. We're gonna press and hold the standby button there, right? And it takes about three seconds, and it will show up that it's going into the shutdown cycle, which is so great. Yeah, and so then what we have is, this is, you know, you wanna leave this lid closed, mm -hmm. let it go through the full shutdown, right? and while, you know, once it's done shutting down, there's a couple of things you can do to keep it and get it ready to go for next time. Definitely. And also, if you have different models, like I can show you on the Pro 30 for the shutdown cycle, you just turn the knob to the shutdown cycle. So it's a little bit different, but we're always shutting these down. Um, then cleaning at the end. Again, I always love to take a grill brush to it when it's not too hot and just scrape them down right away so any residual food drops off right away. And then if you need to change the liner, if you're using the disposable liners, you can do that once it's a little cooler. Or again, if you've wrapped this bottom, what do we call it? The drip, drip tray. Drip, drip <laughs> tray, yes. <laughs> if you've wrapped your drip tray in foil, just make sure again, you remove that and wrap it really tightly so you don't impede the airflow. And then we can talk too, the other thing I do once it's cooler is make sure I check the grease bucket or if you've got the timber line and how it's built inside, you wanna really carefully try to remove that when it's cooler take a look and if you need to drain those because the last thing you want is grease spilling all over your patio or anywhere where you're cooking, right? Completely agree. Yeah. If, if it's a longer cook, like if you're doing overnight brisket or right. butts, uh, you may have to clean it a little more uh, often. Yeah. You know, maybe after that cook or maybe you can get two cooks out of it, but it's a long cook, you're burning a lot of pellets, you've got a lot of grease, just better to clean that up and, and get it ready to go. Yeah. Um, and then also once all that's done, you've got it cleaned up, you can throw your cover on. I know for me, we were talking about yeah. it. Uh, it helps with the pollen. Oh, totally. Where I live, it's like yeah. it's yellow right now everywhere. Yeah. So just make sure the grill is nice and cool. Yeah. Remember to also keep it plugged in and turned on in the back. Um, and then put, throw your cover on it, and it'll be ready to go the next time you need it. Exactly. And one thing I need to mention, too, is, and, and to ask you, is how often do we clean out the fire pot and actually use a shop vac or something to clean out the bottom? How often do you have to clean yours? So we were talking about, like, that kind of clean, I usually do about every four to five bags of pellets. Okay. So that way I can get in there, get everything vacuumed out, right. uh, cleaned up, and ready to go. Um, that's a great suggestion, and I think that I probably might not do mine enough, but it's really good to keep in mind when you're done with it after it's gone through the shutdown cycle or before you start again to just take a look every, I don't know, every five to ten cooks. If yeah. You, yeah, when I'm cooking that much, I need it. So it'll, may, it'll ensure a perfect um, Traeger experience every time, right? Anything else on shutting down our grills? I think we've covered so I much, think haven't she's we? Shut down. Let's we'll see if we got any more questions. Yeah, and these are for all of us who have yeah. these. People ask me all these questions all the time, mm -hmm. so now we put it in one place for them. I right? love it. Best cleaning products. Chad, what are the best cleaning products to use? So the best cleaning products to use. <laughs> I, I told this story. Uh, I love the Traeger uh, grill cleaner. Yeah. So I, when we were doing <laughs> shop classes back in person. Yeah. And those are coming back, I promise you. We, they will, they will. Um, 
I remember I had a retailer that said they had bought a ton of Traeger cleaner, and I would used it in the past, <laughs> knew it was really good, and it's all natural. Yes. Thank goodness it says that in the big print, and I'm like, and somebody in the class asked, well, what do you like to clean your grill with? <laughs> and so I took a shot of the grill cleaner, and then went outside and cleaned said grill, <laughs> and they're like, oh my gosh, you cleaned the grill up so good that it didn't kill Chad. So we, <laughs> we sold all 36 bottles that night. So High five, I'm if, sorry. Uh, like... If anybody wants to... If any retailers are watching, you want to sell a lot of Trigger Grill Cleaner, get the taste test, old boy. It's called legal. I don't know, <laughs> but it does say it's all natural. And I have to say, I've had, I've had great luck with the Trigger Cleaner. I had a bottle sent. I ordered a bottle for all of my friends who have Traegers because I'm like, don't use anything else. It does everything you need it to do. It, it does. It's non-toxic. It can clean yeah. the outside. It can clean the grates really well. Yep. Um, even inside here, some of the insulation, oh. if that gets right. a little messy, you can spray it on there and uh, let it set, wipe that down. And it wipes down. Kind yeah, of magical. Yep. Oh my gosh. I'm so glad you're okay. But <laughs> it really is non-toxic. Non-toxic. <laughs> what other questions? How frequently should you do a clean? How frequently should you do a deep clean on your grill? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think that goes back to kind of depends on what you've cooked on it. Right. But I mean, I would think you should be wanting to do those two, three times a year. Yeah. And that's where we're pulling everything out, wiping everything down, cleaning it all, vacuuming everything. Um, just soup to nuts. Yeah, I do that about twice a year. I always do it in the spring, like the spring cleaning situation. And then if I've done a ton of heavy cooking on it, I think, okay, before I go into the winter, but at least twice a year. And I really just think it depends on how much you cook. Like, I got to think, like, when you're writing your cookbooks, you're probably doing it oh. more frequent than that because oh, you're crazy. just cooking around the clock. Yeah, all the time, yeah. right? All the time. And on two grills. And so um, we probably do it more than most, but make sure at least twice a year you're doing the full clean. Yeah, absolutely. Good. Any other questions for us? What is the best way to clean the grill grates? I think you and I are going to agree. Yeah, so the best way to clean the grill grates is I like to use the trigger cleaner. I'll spray them really, really well. Mm -hmm. And then you can use uh, either a grill scrape or a grill brush, mm -hmm. scrub them down real good. And then I like to go through with a towel. Uh, it can even be you know t double paper towels and just wipe it down right. real good. Um, that's how I clean uh, grill grates. Pretty straightforward. Yeah, and even if I take the grill brush to it when the grill's still a little bit warm, I can scrape off most of the food so it's ready to go for the next time. I don't have to spray it down every time by any means. Right. Yeah. Yeah, a, a warm grill always seems to clean up easiest for me. Yeah, I agree. How often should we change the drip tray liners? Yes, so that kind of falls back under the caveat again of it kind of all depends on what you've been cooking. Right. Um, I would say I use kind of the common sense of how dirty is it? Yeah, how dirty um, is it? And usually after a big pork butt or briskets, it's pretty dang dirty. So yeah. we're going to change it after one cook with that. Mm -hmm. But if I've got veggies on here or chicken breast, something that doesn't create that much, I may be able to cook two, three, four times right. uh, those type of meals before I need to change out the drip liner. And I think it's pretty obvious when you look at it. If there's a lot of grease on your drip liner, or if there are excess pieces of food that have fallen through the grates, change it, right? Yeah. That's where you want to be careful about flare-ups or any other things happening with Absolutely. grease. When in doubt, change it out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've got one more. Um, are steel brushes okay to clean the grates with? So steel brushes, are they okay to clean the grates with? Um, these porcelain grates, um, they're not going to mess it up or, or anything of that nature. It's going to keep them pretty clean. I know some people don't like using steel grill brushes because you can have, they have been some uh, pieces fall behind that people right, have gotten ingested. Right, right. Um, so if that, you know, that's up to you and your risk factor. I, I usually use either a grill scrape or if I find myself in a tough spot, I'll uh, ball up some tin foil, mm -hmm. long pair of tongs, and clean my grate that way. Yeah. So uh, a couple ways to to take care of that. So smart. And whatever grill brush we have that's kind of softer, right? Uh, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, I've never used one of those big stainless steel ones on it. Frankly, I haven't needed it. Mm -hmm. And so things just clean up so easily with these that I haven't needed anything that... Um, aggressive. Aggressive. Yes, aggressive. Thank you. All right. What's next so for us? First, I want to go back and just remind you that we uh, have, you can go over to Traeger.com slash 101, catch everything here that we went over today and tons of other content that you can feel free to consume or share with your friends and family. 
Such a great point. And if you have the question, we've probably made content on it, which is so <laughs> great from setting up your grill to burning it in, everything like that. But one other resource we both love so much is using the app, right? So again, whether you're looking to use it for inspiration, you can search by type of food, or whether you're using it to help control your cook to have it notify you at a certain temperature or turn it up or down, it's phenomenal. It is, the app is uh, can't miss. Yeah. So if you've enjoyed this today, we have a, a library of other Trigger Kitchen Lives where we have fired up the grills and cooked. <laughs> Every time. Uh, Amanda's done some, I've done some, Matt Pittman. We've had a, so a great, great, great group of uh, folks come in and, and teach those. So you can go over to Traeger.com and check out Traeger TV. Yeah. And all those Trigger Kitchen Lives are there. Yeah. Um, also, if you've enjoyed this, we have a private table shop class that we've been doing. Those have been so great. Fun. Amanda's done some, I've done some. Uh, so 12 to 15 people, we do it through Zoom, mm -hmm. uh, very interactive. You get to know the people really well. I think I now have someone that's been to four wow. of mine, so he's getting the frequent flyer benefits. Yeah. Um, but it, it is really cool. You get to connect with people. And, you know, brisket, I, that's one that I do that I yeah. love because I'll trim my brisket. And then I say, okay, stop. All you guys have their cameras. They have their briskets. I help them trim every one of theirs. Wow. So it's just really cool, really interactive. So if you like that, make sure to go over to Traeger.com backslash shop class, and you can check out all the private table offerings there. Yeah, those classes are so amazing. And honestly, I've enjoyed them so much while we've had to regroup and figure out how to come to people. Because Absolutely. I get to cook, and people, it's very intimate in that they're showing me what they're making. I can give advice. And I'm meeting people from all over the country, maybe, who hadn't come here to take a shop class. So I've really enjoyed them. They're so much fun. I can't wait to do another one next week. So it's good. There you go. Yeah, it's really good. Um, the other thing, to stay up to speed on everything we're doing here at Traeger. Make sure you can sign up for our emails and follow us Follow us on social. You'll get all the scoop from us, okay? Awesome. Do we have any more questions? Yeah, last round. So what's the best newbie grill for a small family? Okay, what's the best newbie grill for a small family? What are you going to say? I am going to go with probably a Pro 575. Uh-huh. Um, because you can get up to 500 degrees. Right. You've got the Wi-Fi technology, mm -hmm. um, and I think that would be a great grill for a small family to get started. It's at a very reasonable price point. Right. Um, so that's, I think that's where I'd go. I think that's a great suggestion. You get all of the bells and whistles, you know, that it can get up to a high temp. And if you're really not cooking for a crowd, I tend to cook a ton of food at once, and that's mm -hmm. why I go towards, uh, towards something larger, but that'd probably be a perfect start. Yeah, I think that would be good. Yeah. So go buy that 575 and let us know how you like it. <laughs> Report back. <laughs> what else? What are our go-to recipes right now? Oh, man. Do you want me to go first? You need to think go about ahead. it. Go ahead, yes. Well, I, it's funny now we're talking, the Moroccan chicken I'm making with the roasted root vegetables, and I do it with a chermoula green herb sauce that's so easy to make. That's my go-to. I've made six different types of it on the Traeger. I love it so much. But again, these sheet pan dinners. So the sheet pan salmon where I can throw on vegetables and it all cooks together, or the chicken with the caramelized onions and fennel. I mean, they're magical and they're easy. Yeah, I would say when it comes to one of my favorites, I mean, I think it's it's brisket, I've always said. You yeah, know, so I mean, yes, please. If you don't like brisket, you've never had good brisket or you're vegan. It's you true. Know? So that's that's kind of the way it, it works for me. So I like, we have a, a ton of brisket recipes um, on the app and on yeah. the website. So I like running those. That's probably my fave go-to. It makes sense considering you're really good at it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm not eating my brisket compared to yours. No way. <laughs> Oh, what are some must-have accessories? What do you love? I love the, I remember the first time I was here and I saw it and I'm like, man, what's that hook? <laughs> and I'm like, they're like, that's not a hook, that's a pigtail. I'm like, oh, looks kind of cool, you know, get yeah. in a back alley fight or something. I you know, gotta, gotta I had no idea weapon. what it was. And, uh, and so then I started looking at it and I was like, and now I don't use tongs much, I don't use spatula, that pigtail, I move everything, whether it be pork loins, um, chops, anything like that. It's just so great for moving food around. Oh my gosh, it's so funny. I did not know what it was. Like I got a starter kit. I'm like, what is this thing? Is it a tool? And then I hear this, everybody loves it for that. So yeah. I think my favorite tool, I'm not allowed to say it's my pig grill, which I'm obsessed with, but the, we have an extra large spatula. Is that what we call it? It is so big that you can put an entire pork butt on it. You can put a whole chicken on it. And so when you're working with hot food and you're trying to get something on or off the grill, it is amazing. Really nice. I love that thing. That's my go-to. Yeah, I, I yeah. can agree with that one. I'm, <laughs> I've got one of those. Okay. What's the most unique thing you both have cooked on your grill? Oh, 
What's the most unique thing we've cooked on our grill? You go first. I have to think about this. Most unique thing I've cooked on my grill, we've had some wild hogs that we've Oh, nice. Uh, some alligator. We've done a couple of gators. Uh, rattlesnake, python. Dang. It's pretty exotic. I'm going to go home. Mine are boring. Yeah. Wild, <laughs> wild, wild turkey. Wow. Yeah, there was one. We did a, a tur world turkey hunt championships, and I think I grilled... 375 wild turkey breasts. Stop it. In like a four day period. Yeah. Oh, that's insane. Like you, I'm a, I'm a rookie. That's yeah. crazy. That is so crazy. Um, I, I, here, I thought the exotic things. One thing I did that somebody taught me or suggested around here is that I smoked water to make smoked ice cubes. So for cocktails, you know, to put in like with a whiskey and people, I Bloody did it Mary's. for, oh, so good. So I'm like, people are like, what are you doing? I'm smoking water. It was Incredible, but then I think it's really cool when I do desserts on the Traeger and people don't expect it. So if I want to add a little smoke flavor to something, to like a caramel sauce, but I've even done, I did peppermint ice cream on the grill and I just did the, I um, infused the cream and the half and half with a vanilla bean and just put a little smoke on it. It was remarkable. Sounds so delicious. I like to do things where people are like, there's no way. And then they're like, why does this taste so good? It's Traeger. I triggered it. Traeger, I triggered it. <laughs> What are our favorite models? I love this. I'll ask you yours first because we... Okay, favorite trigger model. I love the Ironwood 885. It's my daily driver. I use it all the time. Um, just love the feature package and it just super consistent. Turns out great food. My 1B to that is the Ranger. I absolutely love the Ranger. If you're just cooking for yourself or a small group, going to tailgate, anything of that nature, the Ranger is awesome. And I have to give an honorable mention shout out to the Pro 34 right here. Because that grill, <laughs> I have cooked tens of thousands of pounds of food on. Isn't that crazy? And it is a workhorse. It is a great grill. So yeah. uh, more than one. I gave you some choices there. How about you, Amanda? Uh, this is my workhorse. We agree. This just does everything I needed to do every day. I can't pick my pig grill because, honestly, I don't even cook on the pig grill that much. I just like having her around while I cook. So this would be it. And yeah, I love it so would much. Would you say the pig is your emotional support grill? My pig is my emotional support <laughs> grill. I, it's just like her name's Poppy. Yeah. She hangs out with me. People know in Traeger Lives now that usually she's in the set. She's just my buddy. I, love I mean, it. I was home alone for a year. Yeah. So yeah, I love her. Oh, I think we have the answer to that. Yeah. So what is the best model for cold climate and windy conditions? I, you got to go with the Timberline. I mean, Agreed. there's so much insulation in that grill. Right. Uh, I've cooked in some pretty harsh conditions with that grill mm -hmm. and have sat there and watched it stay within two, three degrees of the set temperature. So a uh, heavier grill, a uh, little, you know, little, little pricier than some of the other models, but well, well worth it when you look at what you're getting and how it's built. I agree. I mean, you just can't beat the insulation on it, and it really can withstand any temperature. It's amazing. Yeah, it does a great job. Yeah, worth it. All right, last question. Ooh, last, last question. question. <laughs> Oh, oh, I three. love this. So somebody just ordered their third Traeger and they want to know if that's too much and they're asking for a friend. Yeah. No, you're <laughs> no. just getting started. You're just getting started. Yeah, no, that, that is great. And that's what we love about the Traeger community and the Traeger Nation is, you know, people, you know, they, they start, they go to small grill, then they want to upgrade, then they yes. want to have a, you know, now they're doing so much stuff on their Traegers. Now they want two Traegers and this guy's got going three. I mean, it's, it's awesome. I've been there and I, people are like, there's no way you would ever use all of these grills. Guess what? I decided one year I was going to do Friendsgiving for 50 people who had nowhere to go. I used every grill. I worked it so hard. So you can't, yes, the, you need different grills for different reasons. You love some for one thing and another for another. So don't call us until you hit double digits. <laughs> then we might if you hit double digits, we may consider an we intervention. Might be worried. But yeah. we'll see what happens. <laughs> I love it. So good. So, all right. We are done with questions. We did I it. I think we have covered it all. I think we did cover it all. That was really fun, Chad. Yes. And real quick, before we close up, I want to thank everybody behind the scenes here at Trader yes. also. Amazing. Uh, Amanda and I have been up here, but they have really spent the last several weeks getting everything ready for us. And yes. It's just been awesome. And uh, we're super happy to, uh, to have been able to do this for you. So... Real quick, thanks again for joining us. Make sure and remember Traeger.com backslash 101. Yes. Now it's time. Let's quit talking about it. Let's quit reading about it. Let's go and get something on the Traeger. Get thank you for joining us. Thank you. And don't forget, tag us when you cook. Show us at Traeger Grills or Traeger. We want to see what you're making. So.
Thanks, Chad. That was amazing. Thank you. So fun. Bye, everybody. Take care. See ya.